in, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, this is Ad Jacobs. He's the director and co-founder of Pillow Games from Netherlands. Um, I had the great opportunity of uh, seeing the fabulous work uh, that he and his team are doing uh, with, with pillows and healthcare. Um, I leave it to him to talk about uh, all the work and show some of the videos and uh, uh, the, uh, the kind of impact his work is having on uh, the healthcare segment and uh, also with children. Welcome, Ad. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manisha. We, um, I'm very, uh, very glad that I can be here uh, today and tomorrow for the conference. Um, so I want to thank you again for the invitation to come and speak. Um, I hope you all find it interesting what I'm going to tell you. Uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is interesting work. It is my passion for the last uh, four years now. Uh, since I started with it, uh, I got, I'm flabbergasted about what it does every, almost every day. Every time that we go to clients, every time that we uh, explain to people what it is. But most of all, every time that people play with our pillow controllers. So, I'm going to tell you some more about it. But before I do, um, oh, let me tell you why I look this way. Um, I, am very, I think it's very beautiful clothing that I see here. So all the pictures that I made over the last four, four days that, I was, uh, that it was pleasant to be here in uh, Hyderabad, I usually make pictures of people's wonderful outfits. So that's why I bought this one. Uh, it was for a wedding a couple of years back in the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, that's why I'm glad that I can wear it here. Uh, as, uh, as part of my uh, also gratitude to uh, being here today. Thank you very much. So before that we begin, I'm uh, going to explain to you a little bit about who I am, what I did. Uh, so I graduated in 2011, uh, if I'm correct, uh, as an industrial designer from the Eindhoven University of Technology. So I did industrial design, which is basically about engineering uh, for what we in our department specifically did was engineering for people. So I am not a technical engineer, I am mostly a design engineer. So I'm trying to create stuff uh, that is of any value to people. So by this we also study psychology, we also study behavioral sciences, that's all part of what we, what we do. But when you're in the study, it's very um, after a while, you're very good at a lot of different things, but it's very difficult to point out one thing that you're specifically good at. So that's kind of a challenge for you if you want to go to work afterwards, if you, if you want to find a job. So I was invited uh, by an ex-student uh, uh, of mine, an alumni student, and he said, I'm going to start a game company, so do you want to come and help me out with whatever your expertise is? I said, okay, I could try. Try and be a game designer. So I did, and that's where actually my passion for games also grew. So after that, I started doing a master's where I tried and combined the two. So that's how the hardware development for games came to be. I also studied uh, shortly in uh, Milan, which is in Italy, at the Politecnico di Milano, which is basically also a technical university uh, over there. In my uh, years as a game designer, I worked with, for example, Little Chicken, uh, one-up games, and those are also game companies from the Netherlands. So one of the things, probably the main reason that I'm here is because our product that we developed is very amazing. I'm, it amazes me every day. Um, but I'm not the only one to think so. That's why we, we've, since that we started it, we've also won some awards with it and got some recognition for it. So this is just a slight thing of the all the things that we were invited to and to present. A uh, lot of uh, GDCs, Gamescom, Games for Health. We, uh, we got second place in a uh, award ceremony in 2013. Um, so we all almost won 200,000 euros, which is a lot of money, but we almost won it. So to go, um, I think it's very small for the people in the back to read, but I'll read it. Um, it says origin. So let me first start and describe to you how this game controller came to life. It started out as a university project and around me back in, that, back in the day I saw a lot of people playing games, video, video games and it was sort of, a, sort of an inheritance from the arcade 
game mode that I saw that, people, that drove people crazy. So there wasn't a lot of mobile phone games back then, um, not, as, not as vivid as it is today, but we had a lot of uh, people that were basically, um, they were married to the television. They were, <laughs> especially kids, a lot of kids, after they came home from school, they started playing video games. And for some kids, uh, for example, the use case of, of, of my project, uh, this little boy, Tim, he was 13 years old and he loved to play, um, he loved to play the Nintendo Wii. Um, and he played the Super Smash Bros, which is a very violent and quick button bashing game. And he had the, one of the things that he was, he was quite autistic and his parents didn't like it very much for him to play it, but it was basically the thing he lived for. So he shouted out every movement that he made, he knew every character and he, 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 was, he was basically condemned to the, um, to the attic where he could play it so that his parents wouldn't be so much um, disrupted by his behavior of gaming. It's this, it's this little boy there and this is his father and basically I found it my, uh, my challenge to create something for them that because he was so much passionate about gaming that he knew every character that he could tell you stories about it endlessly. He knew from what years they were and everything. So I thought this is really his passion. So why can't his parents share with him in this beautiful, uh, th the things that he liked most? So that's actually where I started researching uh, ways of collaborative gameplay. So I thought if I want to bring the parents and the kid together in games, I should research collaborative gameplay. Um, because I, wanna, I want them both to collaborate and to cooperate to, to, to achieve some kind of goal. So what I did, I was creating a game that um, was very simple also because uh, the parents didn't, weren't able to cope with the button bashing interface, right? Um, so it has to be very simple. So I created a little dot on the screen which moves up if you press one button and if the other one's pressing button, it goes to the right. So together, you can navigate over the screen, right? In two-dimensional space. But what kind of controller would I use? I mean, a button is again a button and it's technology, some kind of perceived technology, which was also part of my research, which was very, uh, very much of a barrier to a lot of people and also the parents of uh, this boy, Tim. So I have the, I'm lucky, I have three sisters and one Saturday we were watching a movie at my parents' place and they all hold it, held a pillow in front of them for comfort. For It was kind of an emotional movie, I guess. I, I don't remember exactly what movie it was, but it was there that um, I got the idea of using a pillow as a game controller because everybody understands what a pillow does. At least if you, um, uh, you use it for several things during the day, um, so you can sit on it, you, you can sit against it. So it has a lot of intuitive interactions in it. So my challenge was, and it was also very soft and comfortable, so which was something opposite to hard control buttons and technology oriented or at least perceived uh, kind of uh, things. So that's where actually my journey started of developing, uh, developing sensors that could be put into a pillow to control the game that I created. So I did this, I made a first version of the Pillow Game Controller. Welcome, just come in. Please take a seat. <coughs> and I showcased it at one of the first, um, it's called uh, Indigo, is, which is in the Netherlands, it's one of the um, one of the showcases for, let's say, new innovative things, mostly done by students. So I was, I was a student back then, uh, so I was, I was invited to showcase it. So I, I coupled the game, I, I connected the game to the pillow controllers. Um, it was it was amazing. It was 350 people during those during those two days that played it that were all ecstatic about it. And they said, this is so simple, where can I buy it? But I cannot, I cannot sell it to you yet because it's, it's only you know, a first version. But this went on, so 
We even got like an article in the Wall Street Journal talking about how the, um, how the pillow controller and the game that we made was able to connect the autistic kid and his parents within the passion that he loved. So we were invited to a lot of, um, to a lot of uh, healthcare organizations as well because they wanted to explore this further with us. So we have here people, uh, kids with, uh, with illness that deteriorates their muscle strength over time. But it's a pillow, so it's very soft and intuitive. Also for them, they could play it even with their heads. So if their heads could still move, they could put it between the headrest and their head in order to control the game. So these kids used to play uh, uh, video games on, um, on a Game Boy, for example, and they couldn't anymore because they couldn't, they didn't have the motoric uh, ability that normal kids have. So now they were able to play again together with their siblings, which was, of course, amazing for them. So this went further into creating the vision of Pillow. Because if we wanted to go further with this, industrialize it, sell it, we had to come up with what are like the barriers that we stay within um, to stay connected to this true and very, it's basically very intuitive, but also very, uh, very much loving idea that we have about it. So we want to be really, um, we want to bring the passion of ga playing games back to a lot of people that don't have access to this anymore um, or have never had because technology is a barrier. So it's very, it's really about the soft values of um, gaming and of sharing experiences together. So this is what we came up with. So gaming with a pillow at itself is unique, right? So there's intuitive values to the, to the controller. Working together is one very big part of it because it connects the two players. Later we found that, for example, when um, a therapist and the autistic kids, when they have a session, before they have a session, they play pillow for five minutes. And because they work together in the game, but they don't have to look straight in the eye with each other, it really creates an open field for communication. Uh, so that's why working together is, is, is so very vital part of it. And it really helps that it's such a soft interface. So love is also a very important part of it. And it can come out in every way possible. So whatever designers of the games can think of, right? Um, and also, like you, like, uh, like you saw in the previous slide, it actually makes the video games uh, accessible to everyone. So we had this um, proof of concept, but we had to go from there into sort of proof of uh, product. So we had to go to uh, develop it further so that it might be able eventually to land in a certain market. So this is what, it, what the connection actually was. So we had this pillow game controller. It would be wirelessly connected to some kind of PC or, or console, uh, and it would create very, um, very clean values as an, um, we call this a, um, um, an analog sensor. So you don't push it like a button, but we wanted it to be subtle also in the way it perceives uh, the interaction and sends it through to games so that you can do a lot of different things with it. So we, um, we found a partner there. So we were still back in the early days of the development of Pillow, which, mean, which meant we had no money. And because we had no money, we couldn't, we couldn't hire just any company to, uh, develop, the to develop the controller further. So what we did in, um, uh, is instead was we have this beautiful product, so we just went on a sort of a road show with different companies, and we tried to find a partner with that. And usually there's, there's like two ways. Uh, so you can go either, you can do an investment round, which gives you a lot of money, and some, let's say, marketing experience or market experience or at least business experience from people. Um, but it was still too early for us for that because we didn't have like a real marketing vision yet for it. We just wanted to develop it a little further, engineer it to see where it could possibly land. So we found a partner in production, which later on would be a supplier of one little piece of our product. So this was a very healthy deal because if the pillow wouldn't sell eventually, we wouldn't lose anything and they, yeah, they would lose just a little bit of, of, of development time 
and cost, but um, they saw enough potential in it to do it. So this was a very healthy partnership in the early stage of a hardware development phase, right? But we were able to make a very cool proof of concept from it. So there's more in the movie, but it takes too long, right? Okay, so as you can see in the movie, there's, like, people just loved it. And this was extra motivation for us to, to continue further with it. Um, so we had this proof of product there. Uh, people loved it, but there was, of course, uh, numerous markets where we could possibly be, uh, integrate this. But we had no clue yet. So what we did is we created a uh, um, sort of a, a think tank, think tank, uh, we involved game developers because the controllers are nice, but if you don't have an application for a specific domain, it would be difficult to sell it. And the controllers itself, just for autism and for therapy with autism, would be such, small, uh, such a niche market that the cost of development would never be met, right? So we, we needed to expand our view before we could actually think about selling it later. Um, but it all also like this, if you don't have any money, First, if you want to go to game developers with a new hardware product like this, you do need some kind of connection between with a game engine or at least some some um, some software that you can develop games on. Um, so I had a few, a couple of friends, and basically I just invited them to my home. They were programmers, and I asked, "Can we guys tackle this issue?" So I want, I have these game controllers, beautiful pillows, and I want to connect them to a game engine so that we can do, for example, hackathons or game jams where new ideas can flourish. So they say, yeah, of course, so we do it. So they went over, we had pizza and drinks and we worked all night and after a few days, we had a first development kit actually. We connected it to Unity, um, but it was like a very scripty API that it was still very difficult for developers, but we invited programmers as well, so we thought, well, just go with it and we see whether they, they make something of it. So we, we organized this game jam and there were 45 students, small companies, indie developers, and we just gathered them through our local, say, game, um, game industry platform. So sort of an, it's sort of an incubator style um, gaming platform in the Netherlands, which is called Dutch Game Garden and Dutch Games Association. And together with them, we found a lot of people to try this out. And actually, to our surprise, a lot of developers found it also interesting to, from an experimental point of view, just to work with new hardware. And they developed games for whatever they thought was necessary. So healthcare domains for physiotherapy, for, um, for autism, as we already had, but also for even couples therapy. They thought about if we can have um, a man and a woman work together in the game, maybe they would have a better relationship afterwards. And this was all tested with the stakeholders from these different domains. We invited them as well to also uh, look at it from their, from their domain, from, a, from their um, professional perspective. So a lot of these things came, uh, worked, into, worked out into concepts, and we picked one that we provided a little bit of money development money for so that we went through with this. But this grew out eventually into a whole, so this is the way that we actually developed our community further. Um, last March, this, we, we called it the Pillow Games Academy. So it was basically we invited students to come and learn to make pillow games while we were actually learning with them because we had no clue yet where this would land. Um, but all together with a big group of creative people, you will always find a way, right? So this created the Pillow Games Academy and we all together went to GDC in San Francisco last March because we thought we should, what the heck, we should do something fun all together. So we did a little crowdfunding to get the whole team there, which made everyone so motivated 
to keep on working on, on, on great games. So this is one of the aspects that, or a few of the aspects that we did during our phase, the, uh, during our development track, in order to keep people involved and to, have the spirit, to keep the spirits up, basically. But then we needed to get at it a little bit more professional because um, we had all these concepts laying around, so we did this for about two years. And we had all these game concepts. We had, we had done like five uh, hackathons, game jams we call them. And we had, let's say, 30 or 40 game concepts. But they were all still concepts. So the Pillow Games Academy, with the group of people that also changed every semester because students just keep, like internships, uh, students keep on going to next uh, things. Um, there was nothing that was really like, we could only do so much for, for a semester. So we could only do one, one or two real games for each semester. So this wasn't going fast enough. So we thought we need to open the track up more, like open the, um, uh, the possibilities more for developers. So we heavily invested in the actual PDK, we call PDK as in Pillow Development Kit. So it was a single script API where we started with when we programmed it on the couch uh, back home and we went into something. We, we got some real experts involved. Um, he's just wearing a t-shirt of Pillow Games Academy, uh, but he's actually a very good embedded software engineer and he created uh, what is called later the PDK, the Pillow Development Kit which actually makes it possible to uh, develop games in Unity from a far more, simpler, uh, far more simpler scale. And this is what we, have now, what we have now today, making that. So the pillow controller also grew from a uh, single like pressure, analog pressure device uh, to we incorporated gyroscope, we incorporated accelerometer, uh, we were able to get up to four players instead of only two. Um, and we did this with our development partner hardware on the hardware side, but also the software side made this all incorporated in a pillow developer's kit. So this is actually available um, very simple through our uh, Facebook page, uh, through our uh, website. You can download the official PDK, except if you don't have any pillows, you can of course not. And, and doesn't do you any good. So I would encourage you later to, um, to order one of our developer kits if you see any potential um, applications for it in your own uh, context. And all the information is, is, is there. So this went a little faster. So after we did this, we made it such, so much more accessible also for game developers to work, who already worked with Unity to, to, to really have all the tools um, they didn't need any more knowledge than just to be able to build some games in Unity. And Unity is really accessible as a game engine. So by doing this upgrade to the PDK, it's now so simple to make games uh, using Pillow as an input device. So this also like rapidly expanded our uh, game base. There's also a beautiful example of a quite renowned studio in the Netherlands uh, that actually took the effort of, 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 of making a real complete game, even though we had no real use base for it yet. But because they believe in the concept, they, made it, they actually made the first um, basically big game for Pillow. So this has about 50 levels. Um, it's a really cooperative gameplay. So you, so you pump up this, um, what's it called? Like a, a, sw a, sl a sling, slingshot and you throw pillows at kind of a block fort and you can do this both to the, to the, um, uh, to the computer or to uh, the opponent, like you can play it against each other as well. Um, but we strongly uh, not recommend that because we like to do the cooperative play, right? Um, so the next Indigo, which was two years later, was again like a huge success, but now we were able to target like really the developers of it. Um, so a lot of Dutch game developers get to know about Pillow right now, and they, uh, they started developing for our platform. I'll give you a good visualization of the workings of the games so far. This, this is, so this is a showreel. <coughs>
So in this particular game, like one player moves the character to the right and the other one moves the character up. So the harder you press, the further it goes to the right or the further it goes up. But you can also press it like halfway. In this case, you have to, you have to clean the viruses and get the red blood cells to the wounds and stuff like that. It'll tell itself. This is like an, uh, the example of the PDK inside Unity. This is a tech demo of the, uh, of the gyroscope sensor. So this is purely just to, to demonstrate to developers that there's like room for new uh, concepts on that part. This is a game that was specifically designed for elderly people. Um, it has a lot of classical music songs and you can work together to get all the notes, music notes. Each of the players like goes over this axis to collect all the notes together and only if you work together you can get the complete song. So basically it's, it's Guitar Hero for classical music, elderly people in this case. Um, but again, a lot of the games that we create are not solely for that target group that it was originally created for. So there's a lot of people that, um, that also love it. So this is like one of the big things for successes for pillow games. So most of these games are able to be played uh, by you if, you, if you're interested. Uh, we have a demo, a, show, a showcase demo in the expo hall downstairs. Uh, we're part of the uh, Kingdom of the Netherlands uh, area. I'll show it to you later where you can find us. So let's go on. So you, so you saw that it was like, it created some real games out of it uh, by investing in this, in, this, in this accessibility of the software. It also got us as a company uh, basically all over the world so that we can share our story with a lot of people like with you. Uh, we went to uh, New York City, been to San Francisco, um, and this was, we do this, we have this fund for it in the Netherlands, which is also very interesting if you're looking to, um, to explore the world outside of your own country. In our case, we have the Creators Industries Fund, and they support uh, starting companies to, to go abroad and to explore uh, relationships uh, with other companies or um, outside the Netherlands. GDC itself also got us uh, some, some new PR. Um, we were actually called the world's comfiest video game controlled by pillows, which is of course very, we're very proud of that. And this, all these things to go outside of your um, comfort zone and to showcase your work to the world, um, it gives you so much positive response that you, it helps you motivate through the years of development that you have to go through before you're actually successful, right? Um, we're not there yet either, because we have this beautiful controller. We are now putting, a, we are now uh, creating our first production series. Uh, as we speak, it's the, it's uh, it's uh, from the assembly line, um, and we're selling it. But of course, we still have to get get our uh, uh, market uh, base right, which means that we have to make enough money in order to sustain our business. Um, and this is this is getting there. But basically, it's because all the good and positive feedback that we get from the world, from all the people that play it, uh, that we want to keep doing this. So we put a lot of our own money into this. And at some point during the process, you have to make some tough choices about it. We did too. And basically where we're doing a lot of things, because you're like a pinball machine, you're bounced into a lot of different directions because you get positive feedback here, you get requests there, and then you go, as a, as a startup, you, it's very easy to lose focus and to go, into, um, to go into a lot of directions because like the money seems to be there. Oh no, it seems to be there, it seems to be, right? So um, you have to make some, some choices and to stay, to stay focused in order to, um, to make it work for you eventually. So we did this too. So we have now developed um, two different games for really specific target groups. So one is the elderly people, uh, which is the game that I just shown you. So we were able to put this in uh, several care homes. And they love it to play with their grandkids. So if they come visit, the grandkids don't have it yet, but then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the grandparents do have pillows, so they, lo they like to brag about it. And it's really successful there, uh, as you, can, you might be able to imagine. 
So the other one, so this is quite a shocky image, but um, it, it's also very, it was actually a pretty emotional moment for us because we figured that there was uh, even more that we already saw with a lot of people, the enthusiasm that people had for the game controller. Um, it was really something that, that helped a specific group that, of people that um, have no other ability to play games and it's very difficult to get activated. So people with severe combined handicaps, um, they need to be active, physically active, and there is no real triggers for them to do that um, that they find attractive enough, apparently. So some, uh, uh, some director of, these, of one of these organizations, they invited us to try something with this user group, which is now uh, one of the main things we, uh, uh, we supply to. This is just a real short. The thing is she reacting to the sound, to the colors, to like the, the interaction that happens on screen. And because for her it's really easy to, to press with her hat and this guy too. And you wouldn't imagine that it would be such, make such a big difference to have a pillow as a controller rather than uh, yeah, whatever else they had before because that apparently didn't work and this works. So it makes you very proud as a developer of new hardware if you see that this is such of the, sort of the role of the effect of what you're, what you're creating. Um, this is another one that's, uh, that, that we're doing, so it's the physiotherapy uh, game that we created. So opposite of what you might think for, for physiotherapy, and we, we figured out the hard way, um, was that physiotherapy exercises are quite broad. And we didn't, we didn't notice, well, we did notice up front, but we had no clue of how, if you're developing a game for physiotherapy, you think of a game that would say, like, you have to step so many times on this thing, or you have to lift your arm, or, but um, the physiotherapy cannot, the physiotherapist cannot be changed by a game, uh, sorry, cannot be exchanged by a game, right? So there's, it's very difficult because they see things, they can give direct feedback, so we didn't want to, like, put away the physiotherapist and then uh, put a game there, because they would never want it. So instead, we're trying to uh, only, with this game, we're, give, we're only giving you uh, cues about how much you should do a certain thing, but the physiotherapist tells you what exactly you should do. So the beauty of this, this kind of games is, well, the pillow itself is, of course, really widely uh, uh, applicable. So you can put it everywhere in the, in the, in the practice space. Um, but mostly they basically just have like a distraction from the actual exercise. So that's where the, the, the main benefit in this is. So they forget, sometimes they even, the patients even forget like pain, they forget like, tiredness because of the exercise, because they're distracted by an interesting game. And that's one of the best design choices that you have to think about when, when you're doing games for therapy, is that how is the role of the therapist important even within your application? Right. So we went on saying that, um, so we have this controller, we have certain applications, and we, ha we are now um, increasing our client base. But there's still this question of what, what's, what's next for us, because um, um, uh, we, yeah, we, we want to expand, and we're already, of course, we're also looking here for what's the next step for us. Um, the first thing that we, that, that we uh, the recent thing that we did was in order to, uh, to be able to be ready for expansion, um, we partnered up with two companies. One of them uh, is also here present as part of my delegation, which is Hulan Game Studio. So they provide software and games, and they have an extensive knowledge of creating games for, um, for both healthcare and, um, uh, and education. So this gives us like an advantage uh, within those domains. 
The other one is that the hardware and production is now put into the hands of a real engineering and production company. Uh, so we created the first version, uh, which was also like three or four versions, right? And then eventually they are able to, to downscale the costs that we hope in the future we can uh, downscale it so much that we can actually deliver it to consumers. But this is still uh, an interesting road ahead. Because eventually we would like to have pillows on every couch in every living room. And I think that would benefit a lot of people. Uh, it would be fun to play, whether it's uh, after a night out with friends uh, at home or before, or it uh, really would help you to uh, exercise more or to get your grandkids to visit you because you have pillows, right? It could be any, anything. So like I said, we're, um, um, we're trying to create a platform for it that looks a bit like this. Um, doesn't say much though. Um, because we have to think about what makes it interesting for game developers to be part of a platform to create games on the one hand and for us and for clients to um, have enough game base in order to be confident that there's something that fits them. Because now like there's so many markets where Pillow could be of any value, but there's only so much games that we have that might not serve them yet. So what we're trying to, uh, to set up at this point is a uh, Pillow Games platform where game developers and clients are both um, attracted. And we do this in a very, um, let's say with, 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 with interesting um, algorithms, uh, we define questions for the clients. Well, basically, the clients define the questions themselves. We have smart algorithms that interpret those questions, basically game requests, um, to create uh, clusters of those. And as soon as we have those, then game developers might be interested in developing for that because they see that there's an actual need for it. So if there's clients, there's developers willing to develop. So you get a lot of uh, feedback from the community of game developers and you can uh, anonymously share the things that you've been doing or let's say a pitch that you're doing, you can share it with the clients. So as a reply to one of the requests. Then the clients can again vote or say, uh, say, say well done to your, uh, uh, to your proposition and at some point there's a match. So they're gonna buy your work. The catch is of course that it's um, you should do this really like in, 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 in stages because uh, if you're going to develop right away and you think you have the solution to the request and they might not like it, then they're not going to buy it, right? So uh, what, we're, what we're trying to create here is sort of an ecosystem, uh, request and demand. Oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So if you want, more, if you want more information about that, just, just uh, send us an email or uh, look at our website. And if you want to play uh, pillow games, eventually, uh, because that's why uh, maybe hopefully you're all here, to play pillow games, you can find us downstairs in the Expo Hall uh, with the rest of the delegation from the Netherlands. Um, I thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I hope there's like room for one or two questions. Okay, good. Okay, great. So thank you first. Thank you.